Okay, so let's look at this uh, rotation problem. All right, we've got a slender rod, uh, 30 kilograms uh, at this point, at this uh, time. It has a counterclockwise angular velocity of 6 radians per second. Determine the tangential and normal components of the reaction of the pin O at this moment. So we're looking for like an OX and OY, but they kind of even give us a hint. Hey, may, give me like an O tangential and an O normal. Uh, so let me draw this free body diagram. I think I can draw this free body diagram on top of what's already drawn here. Uh, so I might have an O, well, let's think about tangential and normal. Okay, let's, let's do that first. <clears throat> what direction is our tangential direction? What direction is the normal direction? For many of these problems, we want to sum our, we want to set our axes according to the acceleration. Uh, so what is the acceleration of what point? What is the acceleration of point G, right? If this is a uniform slender rod, then point G is right at the middle. This is 0.9 meters long. So 0.45 meters from here, 0.45 meters for here. So here's point G. So what is the, let's set our axis according to the acceleration of point G. Point G is going counterclockwise. So I would say that tangential, at this instant, I can't draw that. At this instant, tangential would be here, and normal. Remember, normal is always into the curve. Normal is always into the curve. Let me draw that out here. So this is my global uh, tangential norm. I could draw it here, here. You know, tangential norm. Normal to the left. Tangential is up. Okay. So now. At this pin, instead of an OY, I'm going to call this an OT, and instead of an OX, I'm going to call this an O normal. All right, so th there's the force at the pin, right? An OX and an OY, or in this case, an O tangential and O normal. I've got this moment, 60 newton meters, and I've got, don't forget, I always forget the weight, 30 times 9.81. Okay, is that a good free body diagram? I think those are all the forces I've got. I have defined my axes according to the acceleration. So yeah, I think that's a great free body diagram. Very important. I think that's the most important part of these problems, maybe in the, the whole class, all semester long, drawing a good free body diagram, drawing all of your forces, and labeling your axes, thinking ahead. I'm going to be summing my forces equals mass times acceleration, thinking ahead to the acceleration to figure out how you want to define your axes. All right, so let us sum the forces in the normal direction and sum the forces in the tangential direction. All right, sum the forces in the normal direction. Left. Um, I've got O normal, and that's it. This doesn't equal zero, does it? No, 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 no. This equals mass times A normal. What is A normal? V squared over R, or R omega squared. What is R? Well, you might think, oh, this is a 0.9 meter long rod. R is 0.45. No, 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 no. R is the distance that your point is away from the center of rotation. So here the R would be this 0.15. You know, if this is at 0.45 away, um, this distance right here, 0.15, would be the R. So this is going to be 0.15 omega squared. Not too bad, right? Not too bad. So O normal, 162 newtons is O normal. That was one thing it asked for. Summing the forces tangential. Summing the forces tangential is up. O tangential minus the weight, 30 times 9.81. I think that's it. Uh, equals MA equals M a tangential. What is A tangential? A tangential is R alpha. What is R? R is 0.15 and alpha. I'm not given alpha. It doesn't tell me a constant. Did it say constant? If it had a constant angular velocity, then uh, alpha would be zero, but this isn't constant. I think I do have an alpha right here. So I'm just going to leave that as alpha right there. And now I'm about to sum my moments. I'm about to sum the moments. 
now, sum of the moments equals I alpha, and, and so I need to think about how, what direction I just defined that alpha. What direction did I just define that? I, I said that an alpha leads to an acceleration in the tangential direction. Tangential is up. So I just said alpha was counterclockwise, which is fine. It's good, fine. You know, so, but do you see how I, I just set the direction for alpha already? So now I need to make sure my alpha is agrees. So that's why I'm going to sum my moments counterclockwise. Okay, so I'm going to sum my moments counter, counterclockwise. Okay, I've got some options. Do I want to sum the moments about g? Then that would equal i g alpha. Um, or I could sum my moments about o. That would equal i about that fixed point o alpha. Uh, you know, the, the i about that fixed point o, that would not be given in the back of the book. The back of the book gives me the i about the middle or the i about the end. But I could find I about that point O using the parallel axis theorem. Maybe I'll do that. Uh, don't be afraid to find the point. Why might that one be easy to do? Or, or what might the benefit be of summing the moments about O? OT and ON go straight through it, so they don't show up in your moment equation. So maybe that kind of eliminates an unknown of OT. Um, and if I had summed the moments about a different point, there's no reason to for this problem, but maybe for some reason, if there's some forces at P or something, if I want to sum moments about P, it would be IG alpha plus, I would have an MAD term. <coughs> I would have an MAD term. This would be the MA, well, both A normal and A tangential, but A normal would have no distance D because it would go straight through P, but the MA tangential would have a distance D 0.45. Uh, so you you have three options. You have three options. I'm going to start. I'm just going to sum the most about G. Let's sum the most about G. We'll talk about those other options in a second. Sum the most about G. I'm doing it counterclockwise because I've already defined alpha counterclockwise. Okay? I'm doing it counterclockwise because I had set alpha here leading to the tangential direction. Tangential is up. And what kind of alpha would give me an acceleration at point G of up counterclockwise? So some of the most about G. All right, the weight goes straight through it. Uh, let me go ahead and get this 60 before I forget. I just have an applied moment of 60 Newton meters. All right, ON goes straight through G, but OT, its moment arm is 0.15, creating a clockwise so a negative moment right there and I think that's it that's the, all, the only things that create a moment about point G are OT with its moment arm and 60 now don't try to put any moment arm on 60 that's a couple moment that's a free vector that one it doesn't matter where it's applied it's kind of applied to the whole beam the beam as a whole all right so this equals I G alpha. What is I G of a slender rod? It's in the back of the book, but y'all can memorize one twelfth M L the whole L squared. That's I times alpha. And so here we go. Look at look here. Two equations, two unknowns. Two equations, two unknowns. Hopefully. <clears throat> This is the correct answer. I'm skipping the math, but maybe write OT is equal to this. Plug this in right here. Solve for alpha. I've got alpha of 5.87 radians per second squared. It came out positive. Positive is counterclockwise. Positive for both of those equations. Positive was counterclockwise. Okay, now let's just real briefly. I could have summed moments about O. Whoops. I could have summed the moments about O. I still would need to do it positive counterclockwise because I've already defined this alpha right here. Summing the moments about O. Before I forget, put, put that 60. It's positive counterclockwise. OT goes straight through it. ON goes straight through it. But the weight, 30 times 9.81, creates a negative moment. That equals I about O 
alpha. What is I about O? Well, it's not given. It's not given in the back of the book. It's not, uh, I don't have a formula for it. Okay, but I do know that I, G is 1 12th M L squared. Uh, and so remember, if you want the I of some other point, you can take the I given plus what uh, we're doing with mass moment of inertia. This is the parallel axis theorem. You would add M D squared. So I would take that I, but I would add M D, the distance D that I want to move that I. This right here, 1 12th, 1 12th M L squared is the I about this line. I want to move it to the I about that line. I want to move it 0.15. I'm going to move it 0.15 squared. That is the I of O times alpha. And that one, I only have one unknown. So I don't have two equations, two unknowns. I only have one unknown. I would still get the same answer. I'm not going to try any M point P, uh, but you could take the M of a completely different point. You'd have I G alpha plus M A D. I G alpha plus M A D. No need to do that. But let's take a step back and look at what we did. We saw this, um, you know, slender rod here. Uh, it was asking about forces. We knew we needed to draw a free body diagram. So draw the free body diagram. And I set the axes according to the acceleration of point G. So for many of these rotation problems, we're, summing, we're setting our forces, setting the axes normal tangential because we're going to want to sum the forces normal tangential because the acceleration is normal tangential. And then so I sum the forces in the normal direction equals M A normal. Some of the forces in the tangential direction equals M A tangential. Some of the moments equals I G alpha. Three unknowns in those three equations. If you have too many unknowns, uh, then you're missing something. You're doing something wrong. Uh, but if you got three equations, three unknowns, probably a good sign. Probably a good sign. So I could sum the moments about G or sum the moments about a fixed point. Remember, if you sum the moments... If you sum the moments about the center of gravity, it's I, it's equal to the moment of inertia about the center of gravity times alpha. If you sum the moments about a fixed point, it's I about that fixed point alpha. If you sum the moments about any other point, it's I G alpha plus M A D. And I don't think we want to do that. So stick with fixed point or the center of gravity. All right. Okay.